Divine Service Setting 3, page 184. Please stay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart to confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hymn 832.
glory be to God on high. support amid the wearisome changes of this world, and at life's end, grant us your promised rest and the full joys of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday after Pentecost is from Zechariah chapter 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot of Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. This is the word of the Lord. The psalm is Psalm 145, verses 1 through 14. We chant the psalm responsibly, the cantor beginning the psalm.
this is from Romans chapter 7. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh sold under sin. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law, that it is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being, but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand. according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Hymn 699. You may be seated. Son of the Holy Spirit. From Matthew chapter 11, at that time Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your good, gracious will. At that time Jesus declared, well, what time was that? Well, it was the time when Jesus was saying this, but to what shall I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to their playmates. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look at him, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by her deeds. It was at that time that he also said this, Woe to you, Corza, and woe to you, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it will be more bearable on the day of judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You will be brought down to Hades. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I tell you that it will be more tolerable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom than for you. What an odd time. Jesus is on the scene. He's playing the flute. He's singing the dirge. The lyric to it goes like this. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's the message he's bringing forward because he's God with us to save us from our sins. And so he's going around proclaiming that message and doing amazing things. He's healing paralytics. He's healing epileptics. He's casting out demons. He's healing people of their diseases. 
He's preached the Sermon on the Mount, setting straight who it is that is blessed and what it means to live as a child of God. He's gone around and healed other people of their diseases. He even has raised a girl from the dead. All of these actions, all of these teachings designed to show that Jesus is God with us to save us from our sins. And you know what? Not everybody got it. Not everybody picked up on that. They heard the flute, they heard the dirge, and they didn't get it. Oh, to be sure, there are those who did. The wise men got it, coming, bringing their gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Simon, whom you know as Peter, his brother Andrew, James and John, when they were out fishing and Jesus called to them, they left everything and followed him because they got it. Peter's mother-in-law, from whom Jesus delivered from a fever, that centurion whom Jesus healed his servant, and that little girl whom Jesus raised from the dead, they all got it. They saw this stuff and said, yes, God with us to save us from our sins, heard the flute, and they danced. They heard the dirge, and they mourned. But then when you get to people like King Herod and the scribes and the Pharisees, who see the exact same stuff, they conclude, no, demons, drunkards, friend of tax collectors and sinners. He's a glutton. They didn't get it. Kind of strange, isn't it? Some people get it and some people don't. Some people believe in Jesus and other people, they don't believe in Jesus. And Jesus comments on this phenomena with these words. I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. Now, when the wise and understanding among us hear these words, they look and they say, obviously we've got this figured out. The Father predestined some people to be saved and he predestines other people to be damned. And Jesus is thanking him that that is his gracious will, that he does these things. Little children hear these words and understand exactly what it is that Jesus is saying. And what Jesus is saying is this. When it comes to the wise and understanding of Jesus' day, and even to those of our day, well, they hear the things that Jesus has done. They hear the preaching. They look at the miracles. They look at the actions. And they conclude, this guy is a drunkard. This guy is the friend of tax collectors and sinners. This guy is a glutton. This guy has got a demon. And the reason why they conclude that is because the wise and understanding believe themselves self-sufficient. They look and say, why, yes, I do possess within my power the ability to come to faith in God and in Jesus Christ. That is entirely up to me. That is my action. That is my way of doing things. They believe they can save themselves. They don't really need Jesus to come along. And so when they hear the message that for us men and for our salvation, Jesus came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, became man, was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered, died, was buried, and on the third day rose again according to the scriptures. They look at that and say, no, that doesn't line up to salvation. How does some guy managing to get himself killed by the Romans add up to me being saved from sin, from death, and from hell? It just doesn't work. That's what the wise and understanding people like Herod and the scribes and the Pharisees and so many that we meet today do. And what's the reason for them? It's their impenitence. They refuse to hear Jesus' word to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. They say, we have no need of that. And if they remain in their impenitence, well then, yes, the Father begins to hide that message from them, the message of salvation. And if they continue in their impenitence, their hearts will become hard and darkened and they will be lost for all eternity. And it will be entirely their fault that they ended up that way. Little children, on the other hand, they're completely different. Little children, 
you know, people like the wise men, people like Peter and Andrew and James and John and Peter's mother-in-law and the centurion and his servant and the girl that Jesus raised from the dead. They look at the actions of Jesus. They look at the preaching of Jesus and they look at the miracles of Jesus and they say, yes, God with us to save us from our sins. Now, the reason they say that is not because they are somehow a different kind of wise and understanding in and of their own right. They believe that because God the Father, working through the Word with the blessing of the Holy Spirit, has revealed this to them. Such that when they hear the message that for us men and for our salvation, Jesus Christ came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, suffered, died, was buried, and on the third day rose again according to the scriptures, they say yes, and they confess. I am a poor, miserable sinner. I deserve nothing but God's eternal wrath and punishment. But thanks be to God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God that Jesus Christ became a man for me, that he took on my sins, that he bore them on the cross at Calvary, that there he suffered and died for me, giving his life as payment and sacrifice for all my sins, and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures and has brought to me forgiveness, life, and salvation through the preaching of the word, through the hearing of the message, through the playing of the flute and the dirge, so that I believe in Jesus Christ and I have salvation. And it's all God's fault. And Jesus thanks God for that. Dear friends, at this time and in this place, do you hear Jesus playing the flute? Do you hear him singing the dirge? Do you hear him crying out to you, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand? The wise and understanding look and say, no, I don't hear that at all and I don't believe that at all. And Jesus says, woe to them. But look at you little children. Look at yourselves, you little children sitting here in your father's house. You heard the dirge and you confessed your sins and mourned over them. And you heard the flute and you got up and danced, rejoicing in the message that Christ has died and Christ has risen and he's done it for me. And because he did, my sins are forgiven. I've been spared from death and hell and eternal damnation. And I have life in Christ. And you, like Jesus, then give thanks to God the Father, knowing that your salvation, that's his gracious will. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please stand. Christ, I urge you to lift up your hearts to God and pray with me as Christ our Lord has taught us and freely promised to hear us. God our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that your holy name be hallowed by us in all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word and the fervent love shown forth in our lives graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May your kingdom come to us and expand. Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your Son, by faith that the number of Christians may be increased. Lord, in your mercy. 
Strengthen us by your Spirit according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of both good and evil things, that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed into your good and gracious will. Into your merciful hands we commend David, Patricia, and all who are in need, praying for them at all times, thy will be done. Lord, in your mercy, grant us our daily bread, preserve us from greed and selfish cares, and help us trust in you to provide for all our needs. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us, so that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you, and that no sin may ever frighten or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy, lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your Spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world and its ways, and to overcome the devil with all his wiles. Lord, in your mercy. And lastly, O Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy. We trust, O Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. good right and salutary, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper, 
And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take and eat the body of Christ and the death for all of your sin. Take a drink the blood of Christ shed for you for the remission of all your sin. Take and eat the body of Christ given into death for all of your sin. Take a drink the blood of Christ shed for you for the remission of all your sin. Body of Christ given into death for all of your sin. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you for the remission of all your sin.
this. They eat the body of Christ, given to death for all of your sin. They can drink the blood of Christ, shed for you for the remission of all of your sins. and preserve you steadfast in true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Please stand for the Nook Dimittis.
give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The Lord be with you. Something I have not said in a long time. Special welcome to visitors that are here today. We're glad you guys are here. Uh, with us this morning. It's wonderful to have you. Pray you receive a blessing for your worship with us today. Uh, coming up this week, uh, Tuesday, 9.30 is Coffee and Conversation, and then Thursday at 3.30 is uh, Bible class, so we look forward to those two things. I remind the Board of Directors, we have a meeting next Sunday, or excuse me, next Saturday at 9 o'clock, and I believe that will be an online meeting. I'm getting the thumbs up from the, from the chairman. So we will send you a uh, some form of some form of virtual meeting room thing uh, to get that set up with. And then uh, voters, we will have a meeting that will probably also be a virtual meeting, I would think, in in two weeks. And we'll need to uh, approve our emission subsidy request and send that into the district. I believe that should do it. God bless us all. Mm -hmm.